Who Rich King was happening? What the fuck it do, man? Say Cheese TV, man. What man, fuck we, we doing? We finally right? linked up after three years, man. I mean, the nah, first nah. interview we did, Say Cheese wasn't really. That shit felt like a year. Yeah, it was three years ago, man. For real? Like, yeah, like when you, you know. We on the same street. Right. Different place. Straight up, straight up. So, uh -huh. um, we're going to take it all the way back to the, from the, to the beginning for the people who didn't see the first one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where are you originally from? from South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina, Lawrence County. You know what I'm saying? By the way of Atlanta, moved to Atlanta when I was 18. You know, young nigga shit, you know, still growing, you know. Right. So, Greenville, South Carolina, Lawrence, South Carolina, that's where I'm from. You know, I moved to Atlanta when I was 18. Yeah. So, I'm so 22 why, now. why'd you uh, move to Atlanta? Shit. shit. Like, move out of your mama house, shit. You gotta, you gotta get something, boy. You will be a fool. Just think you cool and hang around your homeboys and shit. I moved to a whole place where I ain't got no family. I don't know nobody, man. Nobody do what I do, so you got to get out there and just do what you do and build a name for yourself. You, you, you at the crib, I already did that shit. I been DJing in the strip club since I was 16 and shit. So it's like, shit, how much work is enough? You got to step outside the box and sometimes, sometimes, some type of time. So did your mom like kick you out or was it just like a you as a person was ready to, for something different? I'm a hustler, I kick myself out, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you a go-getter, ain't nothing, nigga, you want what you want. So it's like, you can't put no limit on that. You know what you want, 18, you trying to make millions. You can't make no millions just sitting back, doing nothing, waiting on your mama to give you something. Mm -hmm. I said, mama, I'm about to support my dreams. Get out here and do what you gotta do as a, you know, grown individual, some shit. But I did, it really, that shit started at 16, I've been, Hustling, doing DJing and shit, watching, busting my ass since I was 14 to 13. So it's like, you 18, I was young, I did kid parties, team parties, sweet 16, strip clubs, goddamn Gu Gucci Man concerts, what the fuck, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, 17, shit like that. So like, you, what, you comfortable? What, you gonna get comfortable? Right, 17. So, so 18, you moved down here. And I say it was like 17, 18. 17, I don't know. 18. Okay, so you moved down to Atlanta, 17, 18. How was it like, you know, how did the city accept you? Like, what? how did you get to where you at today? Like, I was regular, a regular nigga just moving to Atlanta and shit. I had to get out here and just, I already know people, I ain't know nobody. That's why a lot of these rappers and DJs and shit, they getting their name, they get their they shit going. They niggas start knowing them. That shit ain't nothing new to me. You can ask anybody who been knowing me, I've been knowing him. everybody know me, my family, what I got coming, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just out here grinding, you can see this shit from the internet to the street, so it's like, I'm on the internet, that shit taken care of, that shit speak for itself. But when a nigga pull up on you, then they let you know what they got going on, and everything come back A1. Shit, it's just an A1 guy, you feel me? I don't wanna sound like I'm beeping on horns or nothing, it's just shit, came here, kept it thorough. I wasn't pressed to go meet with the big rappers or none of that shit. I just fuck with niggas who accepted me, niggas who was on my level and who accepted me in and kind of find out the niggas. I got a vision, so the niggas who I fuck with and accepted me in. So I happened to be the niggas who, you know, and uh, the city done changed. It ain't what it was when I moved here. You feel me? When I moved here, it was different rap groups, different rappers, you feel me? Like now it's different. We all young niggas. I can name five rappers out of the city and I know them all personally. And, damn near the same age, so it's like, it's different. Young niggas really, I feel like when I move here, so many other young niggas move here at the same time, you feel me? Metro move at Atlanta, same week I move here. So it's like, it was just that time, man. A lot of people move here, you feel me? So it's like, shit like school, you know? Every year, a new group of people come in, and shit. We just came here and just, you know, culture. Yeah. So we really look at the city like, it's a culture for, for this shit, so. Came here and kept this shit going. Right. A lot of niggas, they, they got big headed and thought that was on. And they, you ain't never on, you feel me? Young niggas coming to take your spot forever. That's why I'm I'm 22, but I know it's a nigga at that crib, 18, ready to take my spot. And I salute, boy, keep your shit going, you feel me? Come on, you feel me? I ain't gonna do nothing but salute you. Now, right now, we're sitting on your car, a $40,000 car. Was it always like that? Like, you know what I'm saying? When you went to Atlanta? Like, how was, your, was the finances like? I went to Atlanta in a Honda. I had a Honda Civic. Uh, how much money do you think you, you had in your pocket? You stepped in Atlanta. What I spent on the apartments? 
spent my money on the apartment and shit. Brought all my shit there, got in the apartment, made my money. Yeah. Sit in there, do what you gotta do. I'm, I'm, I'm a grinder. You know what I'm saying? It's different. I, I, I see every nigga out there doing what they do. I ain't got no point to prove, I ain't no big bad wolf. I'm letting you know. I'm a hustler. I have a million ways to get it, boy. I, got, I ain't never got one plug. I ain't never stem one thing, you know. 600 mixtapes in, but that shit ain't never come overnight. That's some shit. Started from my mama, crib, all the way to where I'm at today. You feel me? Like, trying to build a studio and shit like that. Take shit to a different level. So, like, that shit really just a mindset. You feel me? Nigga, hey, start with shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck if your mama and daddy do got shit. My mama and daddy, they, they bless me with vision, help me with support. And I ain't here, nigga, all this and nah, all. It's support, but. A lot of niggas can have a lot of shit given to you, and that shit still never do nothing. Shit. You so ain't got no heart, you ain't got no hustle, you gotta have a hustle. You came here with a hustle, a mean hustle, a mean grind. Something nobody can take from me, you know what I'm saying? Man, Building so a brand. When you moved out and you got your apartment, you really didn't have no money at the time. Just hustling. You invested in something, then flipped it, and hustled to where you got I been, to. I've been, you know, DJ. Niggas like, DJ, this is what I'm just telling my DJ partners the other day, bro. A DJ learned how to fix chords, hook up sound, and Rock the crowd, but we ain't going in the club rocking out with no 20,000, like no regular artists, you feel me? Artists, they ain't got to do nothing but go mama some words, you got to don't stop punch me in. That shit cool, I respect it like a motherfucker, I respect it because it create a vibe, but at the end of the day, being a DJ, I can work five times a week, probably not come up with a thousand dollars, and being a young nigga, you feel me? So, shit. That's what it is. I'm gonna overwork myself. That's why I got 600 mixtapes on live. All right, cool. That's how I got my money. Shit, go get this. That's why my demand for mixtapes and all that shit. That's my hustle. You feel me? I came to this shit pumping mixtapes, finding the next artist. You feel me? You yeah. came to Atlanta. You got screen. You got drummer. They out doing their thing. I'm young. Everybody I know young. Or they were looking for exposure. They just doing their talent. So like shit. But get in there. Same way I met you two years ago, and now we here. You feel me? Shit, he got to see a vision, shit. Yeah. I can't fault nobody who don't see a vision. Yeah. That's like a nigga mad at Facebook whenever Facebook went popping niggas. I don't fuck with that, but when the shit get popping, you on there every second. It's the same shit with this shit. I'm ahead of my time. I'm already on with y'all, not even accepting. Yeah. And when y'all start accepting, I'm 10 steps past it. So it's like, I'm just a genuine hustler. So, hustle. so how did you how did you meet Rich Homie Kwan? Because, I mean, you started popping in Atlanta, but I feel like, you know, Rich, Rich Homie Kwan is when, like, the world, you know, discovered you. You know what I'm saying? How did you yeah, link with Rich Homie Kwan? Shit, I just, just got up with him. Also. I was doing my shit on the mixtapes, just doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? So, so I reached out, I was working on some mixtape shit. I'm a young nigga just trying to, you know, like I said, look for new talents. Popping, you know? Don't nobody know this nigga, so I like, shit. Niggas know him, they on the bus, but I'm like, the niggas I know, they ain't know me. So it's like, shit, reach out to a nigga. I'm solid, bro. I ain't I see y'all no point food, like I said. So a nigga gonna sell me, they gonna fuck with me. So I'm like, fuck around. And my boy, like, shit, did a mixtape. Mixtape did good. He gave me some exclusive shit, went solid. Niggas was fucking with a good response. Reached that was the first mixtape? Yeah, it's kind of like a little compilation type shit yeah. on live. You know, like, you know. It's just me, but who Rich King take with help from an artist he hosted. So like he did, I'm reaching out, you know, shit, fuck with you, we go on the road, woo, woo, woo. shit. Sooner or later, we just got it, got that shit together, got in motion doing that shit. Shit just did what it did, but me, I always had a vision, like I say. You know, I like to fuck with people who got something going, so like, I brought, I bring shit to the table, I ain't no nigga trying to come around you. And, this all right shit if you got a higher pedestal shit i'm okay. we can be cool but i'm not about to sell my soul and you know do boy i'm just gonna get right there and do my thing and bring everything i got to the table to your table we make a bigger table but shit this shit was rocking but that shit really ain't go how it's supposed to yeah. um you know sources you know a lot of people in the streets tell me it was a financial thing i don't know what it was me i'm just a, a flat out like i say i speak for the djs i'm not we don't walk in the club and get these big lump songs like that. And the educated DJs, you feel me? The little producer niggas and shit like that. No offense, but they go in there and do that shit because of their name and shit. 
but a nigga with skills, they they take them to respect that shit whenever that shit missing. You feel me? So it's like that shit deeper than it's 2016, 17. So that shit deeper than just that shit deeper than that. I bring a lot to the table by being a brand myself. So it's like shit. I don't know what it is, but I know if you bring a lot to the table and you see shit rising, shit, you are ask for certain shit like shit. Shouldn't just be that. Shit, I'm gonna be verbal about it. That ain't what it is, and they didn't want to. You know, I don't know what they wanted to do. I don't know. That's not my business. But all I know, we was just doing business. I guess they didn't fuck with the kid to understand what I had going on at the time. Like I said, I'm a little bit ahead of my time, so if you didn't understand what I had going on at the time, I understand. That's why I accepted it how it is. I ain't never, you know, you see me on the road with niggas. Parties from the, you know, like this shit never gonna stop. It's, it's building a brand. This hood rich king, bro. I ain't gonna buy. I don't know. Shit, I got around them niggas. DJ Lil King, bro. That's a young nigga, 18, 19. He's trying to see some shit. That's what that shit did. That shit got me. I'm from, like I said, I'm from Lawrence, South Carolina, bro. You can look this shit up. This shit small, bro. So, so it's like, come from that to come to this. Atlanta, that's already a transition. So you gotta take that shit to hold another toe, and take it to another toe, go on the road. All right. I don't, I don't believe in man. I believe in God. So like shit, man don't see the vision. Ooh, that's God telling me going to something up. So that's when I was like, it's cool. At the time when they called me and said they didn't need me, I was riding around with Thug, Cleveland Ave. I was on Thug Block in the car with him riding around. You feel me? So you calling me, telling me that you don't need me to DJ, but. My, my relationship with Rich Homie Corn, my relationship is not with his father, so your father should have to call me and do that, you feel me? But that ain't my business, I don't really care, that's why I, I don't care if a nigga ever hear this shit, I don't give a fuck, I ain't never been my, I ain't never been in this shit for that, you know what I'm mean? saying? Niggas love my mixtapes, you feel me? So when, when, you, it seems as though when, when you start fucking Corn, though, his career went south, I mean, why do you think that came about? Do you think, uh, you know, he stopped, he stopped working as hard? Or was it because, you know, uh, like, why, why do you think Rich Homie Kwan's career went south? Niggas, niggas always working. I'm still working to this day. I ain't, I don't got bad vibe with him. That's my, he cool. I don't, I ain't gonna say it's like my nigga, but he cool. I fuck with him, but at the end of the day, I don't know. All I know when I escalated from that shit, my focus is on getting this paper and these niggas got millions and shit. Like, that's cool, you feel me? Like, that's cool. I, I ain't really, I ain't beat 1,000, bro. I ain't really ever paid that shit no attention. That, that just go to show you, like, your team got a lot to do with you, you feel me? Like me, this shit bigger than me. Like I tell a lot of people, this shit ain't just me. This shit a brand, you feel me? This shit, I really wake up and work hard for this shit bigger than me. I can die today, this shit, this shit gonna keep going, you feel me? Like at the end of the day, shit, I'm gonna keep going when you got good karma. You feel me? You gotta do, do folks good. You gotta treat motherfuckers right. That shit go a long way. That shit show. So I don't know, bro. I don't know what the fuck. You know what I'm saying? All I know, and I escalated from that shit, my focus on to keep doing good business, keep this shit going. When I was on the road, I was still booked up with mixtapes. That was the main problem. I'm like, shit, I'm making this off mixtapes. Why well, can't make this off I'm going on the road with a superstar? So it's like, a whole lot of respect and understanding as a person you gotta go through and do with that type of shit. So not to put no 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 words. I don't wanna be putting nobody bidding. That way I'm like, I ain't, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know what the hell they had going. Yeah, you yeah. feel me? So basically you just felt overworked and underpaid. Nah, I never overworked until like shit. We gained it, we're a team, we got all rise together, so so say. So shit. Look, if I go up on these mixtapes as I do, my mixtapes, I started out charging fifty dollars for mixtapes. Then then get a few bands for that shit now, you feel me? From $50 to a few bands, you feel me? Crazy. But at the end of the day, as that shit elevated, I know, bruh, this shit ain't gonna be all me if I just wanna do this shit right. But I'm my own boss, I don't got nobody controlling me, you know, 50-50 deal, you no know, 3-6, I don't got that. I got respect with my my business partners, like shit. I grow, you grow, that's what we doing. That shit gonna go, from, go like that, that's how this shit go, shit. That's how this shit go. So you started off $50 a mixtape. Yeah, that's what I'm telling nigga. This shit started way, way. If a nigga go to this level, nigga, I ain't even think he going to the next. So he like, shit, 
I started that shit fifty dollars for real. One so, fifty shit. Then you and Rich on me corn split ways. You was was you a thug already working together and people yeah, like how did that come, how did those come? That's what I'm saying. Like I can't be on the road with no artists if I'm around every rapper that's popping in the streets. Like I'm sitting with Longway every day. I'm sitting with thugs every day going and sipping act. Like, come on, bro. I ain't cold in my life. I ain't about to stop doing this and go over here and be dudded out doing nothing. I'm over here with my folks. Like, that's why niggas fuck with me. And I pull up the shit niggas know. Thugs see me to this day. It's love. I'll set me go to my brothers. You feel me? Any nigga who was on that come up during them years, like during the years, I'll fuck with me. You feel me? But, you feel me? I don't <laughs> I don't know, bro. Shit, I just do right, man. I ain't gonna lie, bro. You treat niggas right, man. That's what this shit really about, man. Keep me on your, your real team together and keeping your keeping them ducks out the square. Yeah. So, 2010 come. I mean, shit. 2013, 2014 comes. When did the whole Hoodrich, you know, coalition come about? Did you start? I joined Hoodrich. Nah, Hoodrich and shit. I wanted to be when I was a kid. I grew up. When I first came to Atlanta, me and my brother was about 20 mixtapes. Like, that's why I'm on. I grew up loving music. Like, I made my first mixtape in fourth grade. Bro. So like, I grew up loving music. So like, mixing songs and shit, that's what a nigga did. So like, come down here to the A, me and my brother, we gonna buy a bunch of CDs, shit. DJ Screen, that was when the rock over on Swag Season drop. Bought that motherfucker. That motherfucker was a work of art, you feel me? I can go get a deep song, make an uh, album out of the stove and play it. That shit boring. Boring as fuck, you feel me? It's cool, but it's boring, you feel me? I don't care what you say. Shit boring. But then, take that shit and do your difference. You know what I'm saying? That shit was something to me. Where I'm from, ain't got no mixed stage shots. We ain't got none of that. So I'm the young nigga in the sixth, seventh grade, burning CD, take it to the high school, something. Ooh. What? It's a come up, it's a boss. What? How can I go wrong? Take that shit, transition that shit to live mixtapes. You feel me? All niggas really did. That's why I don't know if I jumped off the question or what, but. That's all. I don't like the mixtapes, already some shit going. I was probably had almost 100 tapes when I made it. Hey, that was some shit I was on. Like, I moved out of my city off mixtape money. You feel me? I ain't gonna hold no nigga down. And then like a bitch though, but got all the way, you know what I'm saying? That's off the grind, knowing I can do stacking and save, you know, feel me? So it's like, yeah, nigga wanna be an artist, you wanna be a DJ, alright, you can be that, but you wanna take that shit above and beyond, you gotta do business. You gotta understand business, you gotta really love what you do. I don't been the young nigga and I'm drifted off with you. If you don't love what you, you do, that shit ain't gonna love you. Fuck you, somebody else doing that shit with a passion. Fuck, you feel me? So like, young nigga, I know niggas out here to get this shit. I want it too, so I'm gonna get it from way before a nigga get mine, man. For real. I don't know how to put it.